Hey everybody, so in this module we're going to be talking about making regression tables and coefficient plots. And I'm going to be showing you two packages uh, for making regression tables. There are lots of packages out there, uh, but there's two that I really like to use in my own work. Uh, the first is the broom package, which is great if you're just uh, running through a bunch of different uh, model specifications and you want to see what the results look like quickly in your Quarto document. Um, and model summary is uh, great if you have, uh, you've decided on the models that you want to display and you want to have uh, a really uh, nice table, a pretty table that combines all of the models into, you know, one table. So, uh, so in this video, we're going to focus on the broom package and displaying basic regression results. And along the way, I'm going to introduce you to a really cool uh, package called PSciencer um, that is great if you are interested in conflict studies. It allows you to uh, put together a data frame, uh, including uh, variables related to conflict at the state, meaning the country level, and the interstate, meaning the international or intercountry um, level. So if you're interested uh, in civil conflict as it's occurred in, uh, in countries over time at the country level, not at the disaggregated subnational level, but at the country level, or if you're interested in interstate conflict. Okay, so why don't we just uh, jump right in and get started. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, let's um, put together a data frame with conflict uh, variables using the Peace Sciencer package. All right, and uh, we'll create a code chunk here and we'll label it make data frame and then from there let's uh, go ahead and load two packages we'll load peace sciencer this assumes that you have it installed and we will load dply r to wrangle our data all right and uh, we'll start off here by making an object called conflict data frame and then we'll use the create state years function from the psciencer uh, package to create a data frame with states and years over time in the rows, okay? Um, so our unit of observation here is gonna be the country year or state year. Uh, by state in political science, uh, frequently referring to countries, um, in case that's confusing for you. Um, so system, we're going to identify uh, the Gleditch Ward uh, system of country codes uh, for our analysis. So uh, system is GW, that's just the country codes that we're going to be using. All right, and we're going to filter the data. Um, for uh, 1946 to 1999. And the reason is that we're gonna be reproducing an analysis by Fearon and Layton, a famous uh, analysis of uh, conflict onset. And um, we're not gonna be exactly reproducing it, uh, but, uh, but in this lesson and also in the assignment for this module, uh, you guys are reading an article by Furon and Layton where you're going to be attempting to reproduce their analysis using these, these data. Uh, and their analysis runs from 1946 to 1945 to 1999. This data set only includes data from 1946 onwards, so it's a pretty good approximation of their data. So year um, in uh, combine 1946 to 1999, and that will filter these data from uh, the P-Sciencer package for those years, all right? 
Okay, from there, we're gonna use a bunch of these add functions that are available in the pSciencer package to just add groups of variables, okay? Uh, and that's the really cool thing about this package for conflict analysis, um, p-science analysis, if you're interested in that kind of thing. It makes it really easy to put together a data frame. So we're gonna first add the UCDP data on, um, and see it even gives you an autocomplete here that tells you what you're adding. Uh, UCDP armed conflict data to our state year data frame. So UCDP ACD and we're going to specify type equals interest state because we want internal conflict or civil conflict. Furon and Layton's analysis about civil conflict, so we want to have only data on interest state, not interstate conflict. And then we're going to specify only wars equals false because that would uh, limit our analysis to conflicts only of a certain size. So uh, we're going to keep all of them here. Um, and then we're going to add our uh, democracy data. And this is these are data from VDEM, okay, which you're familiar with by now. And then uh, we're going to add data on uh, ethno-religious fractionalization. So these are data about the fractionalization or polarization of a country's ethnic and religious groups. Okay, and that's a key part of uh, Fairman and Layton's analysis, so we're going to add that. And then from there, we're going to add data on uh, state domestic product and gross domestic product. We're really only interested in gross domestic product, but they come together. And then we're going to add data on uh, terrain. So rugged terrain. Okay, and then finally we'll glimpse these data just to see what all is in there before we move on to the next step. Let's go ahead and run this, make sure it works or see what errors we get. Let's see. Okay, and I think I found the error here. So uh, I just didn't have the assignment operator completed. I only had the uh, less than sign. I didn't have the dash there. Okay, so let's go ahead and rerun that. Okay, and now we can see all the data in our data frame um, that uh, the pSciencer package has put there. Um, so we have our country code, state name, year, our conflict data, our democracy data, our fractional ethnic fractionalization data, religious fractionalization data, GDP, um, population, state domestic product, um, and uh, terrain. Okay, so this is uh, what we're going to use then to run our regression. So now we can go ahead and we can say let's run our regression analysis and we're going to do a uh, a logit uh, or logistic regression here and um, I'm assuming you guys know what that is because you should have taken uh, a stats course uh, that would have included regression analysis uh, as a prerequisite for this course um, so I'm not going to spend any time explaining what a logistic re regression is we're just going to jump in and do it and uh, the part I'm going to show you is how to make the table with broom. Okay, so uh, so label regression, and uh, we'll go ahead and load our broom package, and then we're going to store our model. We're going to run a regression, a logistic regression. We're going to store it in an object um, called conflict underscore model. And we're going to type GLM, which stands for a generalized linear model. And our, um, our dependent variable is going to be conflict onset, which in this data, database is UCDP onset. Um, so that's the focus of the Fearon and Layton article. Uh, and, uh, and so it gives you basically, you can see up here, a one or a zero. Uh, for whether a conflict started in a given country in that particular year.
right? So the United States from 1946 to 1959, which is all we can see here, if we open the data frame, we could see more. Um, but, uh, but there was no conflict in those years. But if there had been a conflict that started that year, then it would be coded as one. So UCDP onset is our dependent variable, and then um, a till date to uh, signify a formula. And then we add our, uh, our independent variables to the analysis. So we're gonna have ethnic fractionalization, religious fractionalization, uh, democracy v2x underscore polyarchy the polyarchy score which you uh, know by now and then um, we're gonna have a terrain variable a control for rugged terrain because that's known to be associated with conflict onset rebels like to hide out in the mountains and forests uh, and then we're gonna have a GDP per capita Yes, World Bank GDP 2011 estimate. We can see it up there. And, um, and then World Bank population estimate. We're gonna get, go ahead and, and stick population as a control in there uh, too, okay? From there, we want to specify our data. Our data are gonna come from the data frame that we just wrangled, conflict underscore data frame. And let me get that spelled right. And then our uh, our regression is going to be a logistical uh, regression, so we have to specify that. So we're going to type binomial link equals logit. All right, it tells it what kind of regression we want to run. Okay, great. So what we would normally do at this point if we were working in a base R framework and we just wanted to see some basic regression results is we would call the summary function on this model. Um, and that would give us, you know, like you'll see here in a second, it'll give us a basic uh, regression table, right? Uh, where we have our uh, beta coefficients, our estimates, our standard error, um, a z-score, and a p-value for each of the variables in our model, and then some stars to tell us what's significant and what's not. And this is great if you want to just see the basic regression results, okay? Um, it's fine. But if you want to snag any of these estimates and use them later on, like say you want to compare across models, or say you want to, you know, um, you want to have a coefficient, you want to produce a coefficient plot, or um, whatever else you might want to do with these estimates, it's kind of challenging um, because of the way that the results are stored. So if you go ahead and you click on uh, the model, conflict model, you'll see that it's in this list um, format, right? So actually retrieving these, um, these estimates, it can be done, is quite a chore. And that's why the authors of the broom package created the broom package was to get these estimates into um, it to make them tidy data to get them into a data frame or more specifically a tibble which is the tidyverse version of a data frame okay so uh, we can go ahead and call here we could call um, tidy from the broom package on this model instead so let's try that, right? Um, uh, we could do it like that, and that gives us these nice results. Or what we might want to do is we might actually want to store these estimates. Uh, so uh, it, let's store them in a new object called tidy model. And we'll take our conflict model estimates from before and then pipe these into the tidy function. Um, and now our estimates have been stored in this object and we can click on that object and instead of being in a list format we have our estimates in a tibble uh, which is a lot more convenient to work with so you could take this and you could you know select um, the term for example uh, the estimate and the p-value 
from this model, you could do the same thing with another model, and then you could do a left join, and then you'd have a single table to compare two models. Um, there are actually more convenient ways of doing that, which I'll show you in the next lesson. But that's one thing you could do. Or another thing you can do, let me show you this, is um, you could use an option, confidence.interval, conf.int equals true, and that'll give you a confidence interval. Okay, and actually, why don't we go ahead and just print this out instead of having to open up uh, the view the data frame each time. Okay, and now we can see we have a confidence interval here, and you could use these to do a coefficient plot uh, with ggplot, right? Um, so now, you know, these regression estimates are just like any other data frame that we would manipulate. We could use all the tools to manipulate the data frame that we would normally use to manipulate a data frame, right, that we've learned in this course. So that's the convenient thing about the, about the Broom package. Okay, so one last issue I want to address here uh, about the broom output is that the p-values are a little bit hard to read because there's so many numbers after the decimal point so it ends up getting written in scientific notation. So what I like to do is I like to do a mutate if call and what we're going to tell uh, R to do is take any number so is.numeric and round it at the fifth number after the decimal point. That way all of the numbers just have, all of the statistics just have five numbers after the decimal point, uh, which makes it a lot easier to read. Okay, and so like you can see, now it's a lot easier to tell which variables are significant and which aren't. Okay, that's how you make a basic regression table with the broom package. If you're making a lot of regression tables, then I highly recommend checking out the broom package documentation. We talked about the tidy function, but there's also the augment function, which allows you to see fitted values and residuals. And there's also the glance function if you want to see overall model statistics, like an R-squared or an adjusted R-squared statistic, stuff like that. Um, in the next lesson, we're going to talk about how to create publication quality uh, regression tables. Um, we're going to take, we're going to produce multiple regression models and then combine those um, as separate columns in the same regression table, uh, like you would see in a social science working paper or in a social science publication like the Fearon and Layton uh, paper that uh, we read for this week's module. Okay, see you in the next lesson.